Um, hi everyone, I'm Malka. I'm one of the outreach interns for the Galaxy project. I've been working on the Galaxy Wellbeing and Mental Health project maybe for the last three months now. Um, yeah, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what the project is about, um, it mainly focuses on mental health, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So to the aim is to increase or improve well-being by focusing on these topics. And uh, specifically for the Galaxy community, the resources that we're creating can also be used by any open source communities. So uh, the reason why, why we wanted to do this is not really adequately addressed. Uh, along with the resources, along with the factors that um, contribute to mental health problems. That could be lack of DI, which means diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, yeah, generally we have like three expected outcomes. Um, one of them is creating awareness. This is just raising awareness about the topics um, through writing blogs and stuff like that. And the second outcome is the guidelines. Uh, it's providing guidelines uh, on mental health and DI for the community. And the third outcome is providing assessment tools uh, for mental health and providing metrics for the So one of the ways we try to create awareness is through writing blogs. So far, uh, we've written eight published, eight published blogs and two are soon to be published. Um, so the first one focused on the scope of the project. Um, just generally to introduce the project to the community. And the second blog focused on defining key concepts, which are well-being, mental health, and DUI. And the third and the fourth blog uh, focused on uh, common challenges that are faced in open source. And the fifth blog focused on why mental health is important and the indicators uh, as well as the risk factors. And Block six focused on um, creating mentally mentally healthy work environments in the an open source, and uh, block seven focused on the uh, the both highlights uh, we conducted above session and kind of like describes what it was about, and block eight block eight was about survey results we conducted a survey and we highlighted that in the box. Just to show you what uh, we have been working on. Okay. Let me finish this one and then I can go to, just to show you where, how many blogs we have written and um, the content. Um, you can access the blogs here. So far we've published eight blogs. Um, it's under Outreach Galaxy Wellbeing Project. And soon, uh, the two of them are soon to be published. So you can access you can access the blogs here, and um, so yeah. Um, so another way we try to create awareness and just introduce the project to the communities through the Bob session, Bob session, and the GCC twenty twenty two. Uh, we just. Generally, we try to introduce the project to the community as well as like, uh, get some insights from the community about what, what they think about the project as well as what they feel like the project should do. Uh, another activity that we did is the survey. We conducted a survey to assess stressors used in open source as well as to know uh, the community's mental health knowledge. So overall, 14 people from the galaxy participated and 20 people from other communities participated. So we conducted this survey to help us write the guideline we're trying to write. Um, yeah, so the second outcome is the guideline. So the guideline is based on this research, which means that we, try, we conduct literature reviews and what other open source communities are saying about mental health and DEI. And another one is from the information we collected from the survey. This means through the survey that we've conducted and through the insights that we've gotten from the people who participated. 
And the third one is to the information we've collected through the ball session. Yeah. Um, so the mental health guideline is, work, is a work in progress. It will be published soon as well. So generally it has like, um, the general contents include scope and objective of the project, as well as basic concepts um, and common misconceptions about mental health um, and um, common challenges that are faced in open source, as well as the survey result that we've conducted and how we can overall improve mental health in open source communities. And another one is the mental health tools that we have suggested to the community and their resources. Resources are anything that helps people with mental health. It could be links to communities or professional help. So another, the other guideline is the DEI guideline. Um, this is like a mini guideline just to introduce the topic to the community. Um, we'll include an uh, introduction to the basic concepts such as the, uh, what the year is. And another one is glossary of related words, which means what ally means or what, what kind of inclusive language we can use. And another one could also be how, um, how to create an inclusive space and open source, as well as metrics uh, that will help us measure DI. Yeah. So the third outcome. So the third outcome is the mental assessment, assessment tools. We have two mental assessment tools that the community can use. One of them is the general health questionnaire, which measures psychological distress. It can be used every few weeks. And uh, overall consists of 12 questions with four options for each question. The other one is the mental health inventory, uh, which has 30 questions in total with options ranging from five to six um, options. And it could be measured, it could be used every month. So just to show you how, to, how it works, maybe I can share the screen, I can share the links here. We can also try to share it, uh, um, Melchior, in the chat. Yeah, I'm trying to access the chat. We can try uh, with Bea to find uh, the link and to share it. Can you share the link? Yeah, we'll do it. Um, until then, I can show you how it works. So basically the, um, the questionnaires have four sections, how, four sections or five. One of them is how to use the questionnaire guide. So you can read this before using the questionnaires is that when you click on the questionnaire sheets, you'll see a set of questions. Uh, if you take the first question, for example, when you click on the drop down menu, you have four options. So if you, if you choose the second one, then the second one is associated with a score. As you can see, it turned to one. So if we click on the third option, it comes to uh, come back as two. So the overall score is the overall score is some summed at the at the bottom, and then. And then once you find once you once you have like the total score, you can go to the interpretation score sheets, and then you can see what the score means. So basically, if you have two score, if the total score is two, it means that uh, the psychological distress is low, lower. And if you have like uh, scores um, closer to thirty six, that means there is higher levels of psychological distress. So the, the mental health inventory also works the same. Um, when you click on the questionnaire section, you can see a set of questions as well as options. You can click on the options and then the, the final score can be found at the bottom and the interpretation can also be found at the interpretation sheets. And the scores, uh, scores 
closer to 38 means lower psychological well-being and closer to 226 means higher psychological well-being. Um, Um, so basically, this is it for the mental inventory. So the other one is the DI metrics. Um, the DI metrics is kind of a suggestion um, on how to measure DI. So there, um, we found like two two important metrics for DI. One of them is the DI metrics inventory. Um, uh, basically, measures workforce leaders and resource groups which means the measures mentorship programs are representation in the workforce or um, how many representation, representation of representation and the leader and, and leadership and stuff like that. So chaos metrics also is another metrics that you can use. One of them is, it has like four sections in total and then diversity, governance, leadership and projects and communities. The event diversity technically measures the diversity of events that are conducted by conducted by the communities. Governance also like the presentation of people and governance and leadership and project and communities can include community safety, psychological safety, stuff like that. So you can click on the box. I can show you. I can share the link later. Yeah, anyways, um, these are the outcomes for the Galaxy Wellbeing Project. And another one is kind of a suggestion on what to do for the future action for DI. So the main concept is like how we can create an inclusive space in the community. So one of the things that we've noticed is that uh, the things that we've conducted is our accessibility audit. Um, which shows that uh, we conducted an audit for the Use Galaxy and another one for the Galaxy project. So you can find the link to the other websites on the on the right on the left. And yeah, so basically, what it shows that it's very critically low, very inaccessible for other people to use, and it has like critical issues um, such as like color contrast, some some aspect of the website is not really accessible to screen readers, stuff like that. And it shows that Use Galaxy is 42%, which shows that it's very critically low and not complying with accessibility low, laws or rules. Uh, so, which makes basically uh, the Galaxy website very like not inclusive for other people. So it's not really, um, I don't know, not really accessible for people to use. So maybe improving that would also make people feel included in the community as well as have um, like, give people access to the website as well. And yeah. Another one is um, maybe forming support groups, support groups um, so that people can openly discuss about the topics that they want to discuss, that they want to discuss on, which will include um, maybe we have some support group ideas for maybe mental health and well-being support groups, maybe uh, groups focused on women, um, DI, accessibility groups, neurodiversity. Those are just suggestions. You can include your own and form groups. Um, and the best platform for the groups seems to be Matrix because Galaxy uses a lot of Matrix uh, for their groups. Another one is forming a DI committee so that uh, there would be consistency and accountability and addressing DI matters such as accessibility so that the community actually follows up what, um, on the accessibility of websites and other factors as well. Um, yeah. um, another one is community values, um, maybe having a shared uh, community values that everyone can respect and live by could be like um, having, um, valuing openness and showing that you value openness for whomever wants to join the community and or whoever is actually a community member. Um, <clears throat> another one is the DI metrics. 
maybe um, measuring the eye on a yearly basis. It could also be maybe twice a month, um, twice a year, or anything. Just measuring uh, the eye on a yearly basis would be great. So that um, the community can track the progress and make improvements. So another one is DI page. Maybe having a DI page that includes DI statements could be a short statement stating that the community is very welcoming. And um, yeah, just a DI short statement that suggests that everyone is welcome in the community. And uh, um, another one is a list of support groups. Uh, we can um, maybe uh, including support groups in the DI page so that anyone can join. Um, DI ser and another one is the DI survey results for transparency, for transparency and progress. Um, another one could be the DI guidelines could be included in the DI page as well, as well as a list of DI committees and responsibilities. Um, yeah. So basically, um, do, do we have time? And do we have time? Yeah, so we have time for a few questions. I think it's it's nice if you can uh, ask your question, and uh, if they cannot be answered today, it can also be answered later. But uh, yeah, please. Okay. So basically, these are like a list of questions. Maybe you can reflect on if we don't have time, or you can actually um, um, answer if you want. Um, so one of them is like, what kind of support group should there be? If if you think that support groups should exist, then what kind of support groups should there be? Um, should there be a DI committee? And would anybody, would anyone be interested in being a committee member? Should there be shared community values? And what should they be? And how many times a year would it be? Um, would, should DI be measured as well as uh, what do you think about having the page and one content would it have? Um, so I don't know um, if you'd like to reflect on it now or by yourself or with others, you can do that. Uh, so basically, I'm done. Yeah, um, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, Melke. Yeah, sorry. Let's <laughs> <laughs> finish. Um, so yeah. I'm done. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you guys have, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Um, so hi everyone, this side Shivani. And today we are going to discuss about my outreachy project wherein we had uh, a very big target to implement notification system in Galaxy. We'll discuss, we'll discuss a bit about the use cases it, it stands, the motivation behind it and the current status that we are uh, present for this particular project. So um, since we all are aware with Galaxy workflow over here, so I would not take much time into that, into highlighting the importance that how uh, a lot of researchers, students, professors use Galaxy to run their analysis and how, how many uh, users do we cater to. And we also know that a lot of, uh, like it is a very big community where, which is trying to make Galaxy day, every day better for its users uh, to, make it be, uh, to make it better in uh, using the, to make it easier for them to uh, provide them more uh, uh, good interface to provide them better results and so on. So uh, the first motivation that, or the like the basic need that we need a notification system was for that, uh, we all know that when uh, when users or researchers run analysis in, in, on Galaxy, so it depends from analysis to analysis that it may take, but either it will take uh, some seconds to complete the analysis and it, it goes up to as long as days. So in these situations, we do not have an information to update the user. Like there are, uh, there is only limited functionality over right now to update the user that, hey, your analysis is completed. Um, similarly, uh, if an analysis is completed, then either we want to share it with other uh, uh, colleagues or other members of the, or in the group, or we want to use it for further for storage, uh, like to, uh, pres uh, to use it further, we want to store it. So right now, for all these cases, as I was saying that there is only limited functionality to notify the user when, it is, uh, when the analysis is complete. Either it is via browser tab notification. So with that, what happens is it may, if it's a very long analysis, so it may happen that the user has closed the tab or 
has uh, forgotten about it and there can be multiple such cases other option is that we do inform by an email but that is only if the user has requested it in the workflow action again um, continuing that only um, we also do not uh, in, are not able to aware uh, inform the users that an analysis has been shared with them so for all these particular reasons a flexible and a uh, extensible notification system would be helpful to uh, to inform the users about any analysis that is complete which users can share with their group members or it can notify a group of users uh, which have which have uh, which have been working on the same analysis together and so on so these uh, this was the very basic motivation for it and some additional use cases to, uh, to which we can extend it further is as i was discussing that sharing notification with other group members then if users want to notify the admins of, of some request some toolbox installment request or some other requests some issues that they are facing so they can able to they can able to send notifications to admins regarding any particular request then we can also inform the users about if there is any version update there is any new galaxy re release currently we have a bell icon for that but it does not uh, come as a pop up that hey there is an update you have to update it or uh, if the user is signing that hey i have seen this uh, that i know that there is an update so uh, job and workflow completion be discussed and some other instances can be where in user want to accept uh, where in we want if we have updated our terms of services conditions and we want the user to accept those to move forward or if we have updated some other uh, parameters uh, and then we want the user to install those particular requirements then only they would be able to continue with it so for all such instances we can uh, add on to this there can be many other uh, use cases as well to this so um, currently uh, as in uh, due to constraints of time i would not go into the entire implementation and like if we just discuss about how does the database schema currently look uh, we have two tables uh, right now to keep track of the notifications that we have we keep track if the uh, if the user has seen the notification and um, like if we, if we want to relay currently we only have a, a track of if the user uh, between the user and the notification wherein if a, a user can have multiple notifications but we can move forward uh, we can extend it further to groups and roles as well wherein we keep track of notification at group level role level and so on so if we are let uh, let us discuss a bit about the api part so currently we have implemented these four uh, routes that is api slash notifications which would create a new notification opposed to this then um, a get to api notifications and the particular notification id it would provide us the content and the message in the particular notification we also have a general get that is if we just go to api slash notifications so that provide us uh, say top 10 notifications uh, right now in the system and then we have a put to update if there is any message update in the notification it can also be enhanced further uh, wherein we will also keep a put to uh, verify that a user has seen the notification that would also be like api notification slash id so if we discuss a bit about on the client side so we have created a component for wherein a user uh, in the masthead icon uh, we have created a bell where which displays the current pending notifications and when the user click on, clicks on it so we can see the content of the pending notifications um we will further want to create uh, notifications uh, via post as like we will want to create a, a, a view component for the post as well wherein admins can create notifications then um, users can see full text notification in uh, the api not uh, in uh, via the root api slash notifications slash id and as i was discussing earlier that users can confirm like we can keep a button or a tab uh, or uh, some any other icon wherein users can confirm that hey i have seen this notification and that would also be updated for us so currently like uh, here is the bell icon which will show the uh, no pending notifications and then we can see the pending notifications at uh, api slash notifications route so in the future work we can enhance this work a lot more and it uh, it it uh, it be like uh, be helpful for a lot of other cases as well like as i was saying that uh, acknowledging a notification if a user has seen we can uh, 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 keep it like this that notification should be on top of everything until a user reacts to them we can also take some feedback from the users we can uh, key, uh, keep uh, either a score or any other sim uh, 
uh, uh, we can provide some default options and we can ask that hey if uh, what are the notification reactions from the user so that something if, if there is something that can be improved for our end as i was discussing that uh, we can uh, uh, make sure that users groups roles they they are assigned to one or more notifications and uh, it can all right now so the notifications are just a message text uh, like a, just a normal uh, string but uh, further they can be elaborated in markdown which can contain links as well say to if they <clears throat> so um um um, how uh, like we were discussing about the future work i don't know how far we had completed it i think um, you got to markdown yes yeah yes so yeah i think uh, yeah um this was pretty much it uh, like we want to uh, uh there is a lot of uh work that we would want to do uh, to this in future as well but these are some of the use cases for it so i think we can move on to questions now thank you Okay, um, so hello, I'm Soumya Shah. I'm here to discuss the outcomes of my three months of the outreach internship for the 2022 cohort. Um, the domain is Galaxy Climate to support local regional initiatives and concrete actions to fight, to fight the climate change. Um, I extend my gratitude to my mentors and and Joan um, for being supportive throughout the internship. I'm from India and I'm currently in the final year at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And um, yes, uh, next we'll move to the next slide. This slide contains the contents um, that I'll be covering. We have a total of 18 slides, so take a look. This slide and the following discusses how the weeks of my internship have been and uh, what I have done week-wise, like in the week-wise time frame. Uh, we can come back to this later. Let's discuss it in detail in terms of mile. Mile one will cover the things that I did between week one to five, mile two uh, covers week six to 10 and mile three covers the last two weeks, okay. So in the very first week, uh, I drafted a Galaxy training network tutorial for the NetCDF X-Array map plotting tool. The very reason is that there are more than 150 color maps and different syntax for projections, uh, which make choosing the perfect plot uh, very over overwhelming. The tutorial is a step-by-step -step guide on uh, how to use the tool along with color map and projection documentation. Um, feel free to read it from the Galaxy Tutorial Network site under the ecology section as soon as the pull request that I made um, merges, okay. So a local use case uh, was needed to be identified uh, so as to draft the potential tool notebooks, uh, which involved the most frequent analysis done by scientists locally for the region of Mumbai in India. Um, the second week saw the identification of use case of Mumbai. So uh, we can explore that through this uh, short video. Um, I hope you can hear the sound. How do we know that the climate of Mumbai is changing? Heavy rainfall and massive flooding within the city, higher minimum and maximum daily temperatures, more inflow of water during high tides indicating sea level rise, fishermen losing lives due to untimely storms and hails, fishers retreating from near the shores into deep oceans. So uh, we can move uh, to the next slide now.
just a second. Yeah. So um, in case you missed uh, any of the problem statements, I believe that was like not what I planned. Um, it had some audio. Okay, so these are some of the problems that the video that video addressed. Um, so uh, we are moving to the next slide now. Um, this, uh, the following data sources, uh, which I have used for analysis, uh, shown in a couple of slides coming next. Um, I strongly recommend any geodata enthusiast to visit these sites and explore if not done yet. Um, this is something that I did in uh, week three. Okay, so I used the week four to sharpen my skills. Uh, week five began with uh, skimming through the code base and the GTN materials to understand how tool development takes place in Galaxy. Um, the tool I drafted in around week six with the help of my mentor is a NetCDF time series extractor. The purpose of the tool is uh, reading NetCDF data and extracting um, a time series uh, into a CSV, CSV file. Yeah, the tool also plots the time series in PNG format. Uh, the tool was built because uh, there was no such tool which focused prominently on time series plotting. The week seven began the drafting of notebooks using interactive notebooks. That's a tool in Galaxy. The analysis of potential tool notebooks, which can be reused for the tool development. The first analysis used, uh, uses the IMD, Indian Meteorological Department dataset, um, plotting 121 years time series of rainfall and the daily maximum and minimum temperatures uh, for 50 years. Below is the plot for 50 years uh, time series of uh, daily maximum temperatures, indicating uh, more number of days with higher maximum uh, temperatures for uh, the current decade. Okay. Uh, week nine began the plotting of a MERA dataset for the albedo values over the city of Mumbai. The first plot, as you can see, shows the same. Uh, it indicates that the albedo values have lowered down in the current decades. And the second plot is a climatogram. Um, a climatogram is basically a kind of a graph that's used to depict the climate of a place. Um, the third plot is an NDVI analysis using a Copernicus land data set. It's, it's done by Anne. Uh, the plots are high quality and uh, clearly indicates the vegetation over the Mumbai region. Um, the fourth analysis is the silt distribution of a Mumbai. The data used is harmonized world soil database. It's uh, very obvious like to find the silt values along the shores as because the regions which are white, you can, these are the re regions of ocean, uh, the Arabian Sea, okay. And these are the links which you can visit uh, to find uh, the code for the analysis, okay. Here are the two technical blocks that I've drafted. The first block discusses uh, Galaxy's climate workbench and existing tools. Um, and the second block discusses the theoretical aspects of biomes, climate and climatology. Please uh, feel free to give a read uh, whenever you have time. Um, there are uh, available in the blog section at the Galaxy's homepage, okay. So finally, we are here at the most interesting part of the project, that's Calvis or Galaxy Visit. So how do you discuss an existing uh, use case or a problem with other people? Uh, do only the people you know help you with it? Um, it becomes very easy with Galvis to share, seek help, and help others with their use cases, notebooks or tool notebooks. It houses a collection of all workflows published on the workflow hub to the EU. So let's move to the next slide. What is the need of Galvez? So as we can read here, there are many scientists who are great at science and understand the current needs. On the other hand, there are many developers who are great at developing but lack some scientific background. Um, there is a need of bringing the two communities to the same platform. Getting help from community on certain topics uh, become difficult at times. Two brains are better than one in some dis discussions. A place where everything can be found under the same roof uh, is the need of the R to save time. Um, so I'll be navigating to the site. Okay. Just a second. Okay. Um, be over with the UI because I'm gonna improve it in the coming weeks. Um, so uh, welcome to Galvez. So any new user that comes to Galvez can choose to register if they decide to take part in any interaction in the website. 
um, without signing in or registering, you can just view all the info with no contribution access. Uh, so you can see I have already signed in. Um, you can sign in using your email and password. Here you can see your profile. It's, it's not an extensive dashboard, just the some basic details of the profile. You can change your password or you can either log out. Okay. So uh, at first we'll go to all workflows uh, functionality. Whatever workflows are available at workflowhub.eu are incorporated here. Here we can search for workflows. Suppose I want to search a workflow named pathway analysis. Yeah, we can find it. And then we can navigate from here. Clicking on this, we are directed to workflowhub.eu uh, uh, where this workflow is currently uh, located. From here, we can easily run this workflow on Galaxy without any hazard. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the heart of the site, that's the contribute functionality. Here we find the option of either uploading a use case, a tool notebook, or a notebook. All of those three have the similar functionalities. Uh, let's discuss a use case. At first, I'll be copying some of the content for the use case. Okay. Uh, so we can add a title. We can select what topic or subtopic it falls in. We can select an image for the same. Suppose I have the title as this. And we select a topic uh, named biology. And uh, suitably, it falls under ecology section. For choosing a file, we can uh, select a test image that we have. And yeah. In uh, this content section where we are uploading our, uh, like pasting our content or writing, we have some of the formatting features. Like these are, uh, I think, sufficient to make your text look good. And uh, if we have any of the links for the workflow link or a history link, when we are having a discussion, we would uh, invite more information. So we can have any of the links we have, we can put it here. We can invite anybody for the discussion and then we click submit. Clicking on submit like creates a new use case. You can see here, the use case is created successfully. So uh, where can we find the use case? Uh, actually, what are use cases? It's, it's any problem that you are working on or you are facing and you want others to help you with it. Uh, suppose uh, I have added this, where have I added? In biology, under ecology. So we'll be heading to all use cases. It's the place where, where all of the use cases tool no notebooks or tool notebooks that uh, you are adding can be seen. Okay, so I had added on the biology section for the ecology. So we are having uh, the biology section and we can find that, yeah, this was the thing that I added. Apart from this, where can you find uh, the uploaded uh, use case? In the main site, the latest uploaded use cases can also be clearly found. Clicking on visit use case here or on all use cases here, we are directed to another page. Okay. Um, here currently I have not uploaded any of the user images, so it's not showing. Here we can find uh, there is a, the title that I have, the name, and the day on which I have uploaded it, the info that I had. We either, either we can like this or share. We can also have certain discussions. Uh, it's like, uh, suppose we say good. We can post comment. And also we can like or reply to a comment. It follows two levels of hierarchy. Okay. So after all use cases, we have all notebooks. Where this notebook come from is when we upload a notebook here. Similarly, we can we can get a notebook in the all notebook section. Or if we contribute to a tool notebook, we get to a tool notebook section. Okay. So how are we filtering? We are filtering using two levels of EDAM ontology what's actually followed in the Galaxy website. Okay, um, the next highlight is uh, we have an outreachy section. Yeah, for now, it's, the info hasn't, be added, hasn't been added, but uh, I believe from the next time, outreachy section can be used to display the works of our past interns so that the ambiguity to new contributors um, can be reduced. Um, apart from this, there's one more feature that uh, here, um, um, whenever you're adding any use case, the number gets automatically updated so that the user can find uh, how much content he or she can find at the website. Okay, we have a subscribe section. Uh, in the subscribe section, um, 
any of the user can choose to subscribe to a, a bi-weekly or a monthly uh, conversational uh, kind of uh, um, so subscriptions like emails. And uh, there is an also, there's also an option to get feedback uh, if the user finds anything wrong with the site or have certain, certain recommendations for the site, uh, the user can, uh, can definitely like uh, come and uh, let us know. Okay, so that was all about Galvez. Let's move to the next section. So what is Galvez? Uh, I think it's pretty much clear as we have seen uh, the actual site and we have discussed certain things. Now uh, moving to the next slide. Uh, this slide discusses what all are my future plans and scope for the project Galvez. It is uh, divided into five stages. We are at the first stage. The first stage involves development on the site and uh, developing uh, and solving the dev related issues. Right? The second stage involves creating a relevant network by making connections on LinkedIn. The third is the awareness and the data collection stage where we'll be organizing webinars and asking in feedback and their interest for our platforms will improve and send out invitations and ensure smooth onboarding in the process in, in the stage of four in the stage four uh, altogether consistent developments in the stage five will make it a success yes uh, this fulfills the local aspect of our use case that the problem that we began with at the beginning of the outreach in Internship. Yeah, moving to the next slide. What of outreach uh, to various functional areas of Galaxy? Um, this way we can filter out potential contributors. This is uh, there's a real gap. Uh, there is a real gap uh, in the tools under the ecology section, and uh, this needs uh, to be looked after. Um, having a flexible but a predefined outcome and timeline of the projects reduces the ambiguity. Um, uh, we can surely. Uh, uh, have a like we can surely uh, ask for the suggestions and uh, have some flexibility in the timeline but uh, we can have certain must achievables in our mind um, this can really increase the efficiency finally the galaxy well-being mental health project is a great idea and very less people are working on it in the field we may give it a shape of a software or a platform where people can assess their health and find remedies too um, so thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. Um, if you have any ideas or relevant discussions, feel free to connect on mail. Yeah, um, now I'm open to any question or feedback that you have. Uh, thank you so much.